what's going on everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Kingdom Culture. My name is Lorato Macheta and I'm so excited to be with you for yet another exciting episode. It's just exciting for us because we really get to delve into conversation that matters and that is practical for us today. I'm your host, like I always say, with the most questions and I am not rolling alone. On my right hand side, we have got the ever so chic, the one that rolls with the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. Mabusi, what's up, fam? Fam, you know, you can't help but blush when you go on. I just, no, wait, stop it. You're supposed to say stop Stop it. it. I I like like it. it. (laughs) Right? I like it. Are you well? I'm blessed, thank you. Thank you, so it's always such a pleasure hanging out with you. Thank you. Yeah. I just, I I feel like I'm, I'm always ready for you to be like, you know what I think, and then I know the fire's coming. That's 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 when you know the fire's coming. On our left side, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. Slasher himself, Cradle Unamaka, looking spiffy, looking suave, with the earth colors. What's up, bro? Standard, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that I, intro. I, first of all, I, th- I like how you said standard. You're like, this is standard procedure. <laughs> we don't need to, like, turn this into a thing. But somehow we matchy-matchy all of us. Yeah. It, 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 I'll tell you what, my friend, we walk in the spirit. Oh, yes. Come on. Yes, These come on. These spiritually discerned. <laughs> oh, I yes. love it. I love it. Oh, yes. We have got Lerato Baba in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She studied mathematics at UCD. What did you study? Never mind. She studied mathematics. <laughs> mathematics at UCD. She works for one of the four major banks and she does pricing analytics. She is also a teacher of the word, which is why we have her here, because we want to have some really great, impactful conversation. So would you please help me, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome Miss Lerato Baba. Make some noise right now. Bizo, how are you? I am prospering, thank you. I love that response. I'm going to use that from now on. I think I'm going to be stealing a lot of things from this show. (laughs) How are you, Narata? I'm prospering, thank you. (laughs) I love that response. Thank you so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Please tell us just a little bit more about yourself. I know that I said, you know, you studied mathematics and you're in pricing analytics. What else that is interesting about you? I was born However, many years ago. <laughs> I like that. That's good. So into Southwestern Township. Yes, Southwestern Township. All right. And um, yeah, so even my birth was a uh, it, it 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 was a testimony of itself. Oh really? Um, yeah, because uh, me being born, it was not easy for my mother. Uh. And when I was born. Um, I was born bridge positioned, and I think what the doctors did to try to deliver me by cesarean is that they actually injured my left side. So, um, yeah, so uh, I, the doctors didn't give give my mother a good prognosis, I think. They said, um, you know, she's not going to live long. And they even tried to encourage my mom to uh, put me in a children's home. There's a famous children's home. I forgot the name. Is it Botan doing or something like that, right? Yes, 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 just down there from home. With disabilities. And I'm so glad that God, um, she empowered my mom to fight for me. To Mm. say, no, not Mm. this one. Uh, She will live and not die. Amen. And um, come on. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was not given long to live. I don't know for what reason that was. Um, But uh, sometimes we know that when things are difficult, it is because God has a plan for someone's life. Mm. Yeah, so that was me. I had a pretty um, normal upbringing. Um, I was not really, my mother didn't make it a big thing to be like, you know, concentration on your disabilities. I was mm. always expected to excel and to do great things. Amazing. Um, my parents had high expectations of me. Amazing. Um, I went to uh, good schools by the grace of God. I got a scholarship to go to the German school, although I can't speak German anymore. Okay. But um, that opened. What happened to the German? <laughs> ich hab alles fast vergessen. Oh, okay. Oh. I forgot. Oh. I knew, I, knew, I knew exactly what she said. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just letting you know that I, I knew exactly what she said. I knew what she said. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I got a, a scholarship, and even that for me is also a grace, you know, mm-hmm. by grace list I post, you know, um, and then I yeah. got an opportunity to study uh, maths at um, UCT, 
and um, I was uh, going to do my uh, masters uh, in mathematics when I had the first I don't know if I should go into that already I had the first um, onset of clinical depression mm -hmm. so I was unable to finish my masters in finance but um, I was um, at least able to even without a complete masters with what I had really studied so far um, to get a employment at one of the big four banks and um, yeah so that started my career then in uh, pricing um, and in pricing analytics up till now. You know when I said tell us a little bit about yourself you gave us a little bit more than I bargained for but I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Why? Because today we're going to be talking about depression and anxiety. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, for one, was a little bit skeptical about speaking about it only because I think it's very important that um, we treat the subject with the um, respect and sensitivity that it deserves. Mm. I think sometimes the church can uh, be insensitive um, in, the, in the sense that sometimes we like to say, well, we'll pray about it. You know what I mean? We'll pray for you and we don't um, really deal with, with the issue at hand. Because you have a personal story, I was hoping that you could um, just share it with us. You know, where did the, where did the journey with um, depression and anxiety, was it depression and anxiety? Yes. Okay. Where did that journey start for you? When, when did you first realize that mm, maybe, maybe something is wrong, maybe I need to, to get some help? I think it was in my, well, I don't know how old I was at varsity, 20s. Mm. I think mm. people, a lot of people get diagnosed uh, because, yes, I am a psychiatrist. I know such things. Mm. No, but um, I mean, you know, I've heard that other uh, illness, mental health illnesses get diagnosed at that time. Um, I, I, I think it was at that time and I was struggling to go to classes, <coughs> although I just didn't realize that... Um, you know, you don't um, have the words for it as a child. You're different from other kids, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and you don't uh, necessarily, if you don't know the language or if you don't know about the illness, that you don't have a way to diagnose yourself. Mm -hmm. You just consider it that, oh, that's just who I am, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Things, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Things yes. like what? When you say that um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have the language to describe it, what was it that was different about you that I you know, can remember? Um, I think I was just a, like, a, I, I don't know, I think I was just a very highly anxious child. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I also got it from um, my paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, we, we just took it to be like, you know, mm, um, and sure, yeah, sure. so we just thought of it as a quirk. We didn't think of it as necessarily a debilitating mental illness. Sure. Mm. Yes. So um, I don't know if I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know the psychological or psychiatric terminology. So yeah. So the depression and the anxiety they go hand in hand. In fact, the kind of drugs they give you to deal with them can be almost similar or the mm. same. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I think. Um, when I look back, um, I, I was struggling with classes, just to go to classes, and I didn't have a word for it mm -hmm. until I went to the, to, I think it was the dean's office to say, they said you've missed too many classes mm -hmm. and you are in danger of being academically excluded. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was forced to then get um, help um, with the on-campus um, uh, mental health services. So they did put me on, uh, I don't remember the names of the drugs, Yeah. Um, but I, I left without having completed my degree mm. and I didn't mm. finish the course. But even then it was not, um, it was not um, successful, you know, um, I, I didn't. Sorry, what, the what wasn't successful? The treatment yes, wasn't the treatment, successful. So the therapy and also the, 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 um, the drugs class. I was taking. Yeah. So, um, it's not necessary um, that I was depressed all the time. Mm. I've had bouts of clinical depression, mm. if I can put I don't really remember. Um, I guess maybe those other instances where I was depressed don't stick out, but when I was clinically depressed, mm -hmm. um, there have been t two uh, times in my life. So I, I, I did manage to leave university, although without the 
uh, qualification I was studying for. What does what does clinically depressed look like? Oh gosh, clinically depressed is, um, you know, um, I think it it it, it, it is bad. Mm -hmm. um, clinically um, de depressed is you can you know people go through blues if I can put it that way. Sure. Right? Um, that is part of the human experience. Yeah. That you get days that you're sad, right? Which sometimes make it hard, makes it hard to distinguish, yeah, right? No, that no, there's no. something really wrong with me or... Yes, uh, I think you, you'll be able to um, distinguish it if I can t talk about my symptoms. Sure, <laughs> So Please. my symptoms were just, there's a, a lacklusterness and just a loss of energy and desire for life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, it, it, it is like that. In addition to, I guess, a, a, a deep sadness and, and, and sorrow, mm -hmm. even though you can't pinpoint what you're sad about necessarily or what you're sorrowful about. Mm -hmm. sure. um, I think the most recent bout, bout of clinical depression and I was actually diagnosed mm -hmm. by a psychiatrist uh, again um, was like five years ago, I think in 2015. Mm -hmm. And I had a very good job um, and I had just bought my first property. Mm. Um, so outwardly things were looking very great, mm. although I was just living my life in the world and I had forsaken the faith and I had backslidden. True. But because I had money, um, I had friends and I could afford to buy myself beer, yeah. you know, and go to <laughs> Newtown and listen to underground hip hop shows. I was good, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, so On Sundays? Uh, with those, with those those underground shows on Sundays. <laughs> any any day. I was not even going to church. Tuesday. Yeah, like, any, any day. Tuesday. No matter any, any boss I am. I, you say yeah. there are a bunch. I was up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So I keep pulling up, pulling back, and I didn't have. Yeah. I didn't give uh, that much of a care or thought to God. Mm. So if you're saying, um, was there a reason for me to get so sad? Really, there wasn't, because there was no stressor that you could point to mm. as sure. somebody who's experienced trauma mm. or that kind of death in the family or something like mm. that. There was nothing. In fact, all the indicators in my life should have been somebody who was content or happy, mm. but that wasn't the case. In fact, I remember the instance when uh, the last part of clinical depression I went through. It was very simple. Mm. It was a very, very simple thing. Like, I remember it because those thoughts, that thought carried weight like a lead brick. Mm. It was, why get up out of bed? Mm. Mm. It was just a single statement. Mm. And I couldn't, after that, master the energy to get up out of bed. Mm. The first three days I missed work with nonsense excuses. Mm. Until um, I was staying at home at the time because um, the flat was, the place I bought was still being built. It was a new yeah. development. And, um, you know, my parents forced me, let's go to the doctor, you know. Um, and then the doctor, you know, I guess they do the uh, checklist and, yeah, and to say, yeah, you're depressed. And he gave me some pills for the time being while we refer you to a medical specialist. Mm. Mm. And I missed work for three months. Mm. Um, sure. My line manager came to the house twice mm. to come see me. My so goodness. also thank God for people like that. For sure. Mm. And it was only because of his grace that I was able to um, keep my job, basically. Because mm. after three months, you can get medically boarded. Mm. Where for a certain time, the, comp the you go on disability and you get paid a, um, a certain amount. We were having discussions like that to be mm. like, should you get um, medically boarded? Should, should you get some disability? And um, because... I, I just could not come to work. When it was mm. time that my three months was over, I remember the first day, I think I went inside and I turned back because I couldn't. Mm. Uh, I couldn't. Mm. And the longer you stay away from work, the harder it was to get back, to into, get back, yes, into, get back yeah. into work. Mm. You know? Um, my other symptoms were that I would eat maybe once a day. Mm. I even lost, if I can tell you, I don't know what having corona is like, but mm. lots of... I had loss of taste. Mm. I can't describe it. Sure. My taste buds were working, but I don't. I didn't. Even the food that I there liked, was no enjoyment in was, food no, yeah. in anything. In, anything. Sure. The in the morning air, in no, like no. you found joy in nothing. Sure. Nothing. I, sure. I can't explain it. Like I didn't even like that. The food tasted the same no matter what I ate. Even mm. the best of food that I've ever had. You know. 
Um, and uh, I, you know, I ate uh, under duress, maybe half a plate of food yeah. a day. Um, to wash, I would maybe take every three days. Sure. Seriously, that's wow. what I would do. Every three days, I would only then get, get into um, washing, you know? Yeah. And even then, it's like, because my mother didn't understand, you know, my mother, because my mother is you know, a strong black woman, Archetype, yeah. right? Um, she's gone through more in her life and she's been able to overcome and mm. just get on with it. You know, the attitude sure, that I sure, had. And sure. funny enough, my father was the one who was tending to me because I think my mother was annoyed. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't blame her for it. it yeah, yeah really, she didn't understand. She didn't it. understand. Yeah. You know, because you say, yo, this person, yeah. you know, uh, look at her life compared to the majority yeah, of yeah. other people. And, then and it's like you've got a good education, you grew up in a home with loving parents, Both and parents yeah, 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 yeah. You grew up in the church. Yes. What more do you want? You're not lacking for anything. Mm. My goodness. Why are you still being like this and not being able to get up mm. out of bed? Sure. So, yeah, so uh, my mother didn't understand that. I don't blame her for it. It's a very strange thing mm. to yeah. witness from the outside, you know? Mm. Um, because it, the first question they ask you is what's wrong? Mm. Um, mm. And you don't have an answer to say, I don't know what's wrong. Yeah. Um, you just know something's wrong. Yeah, something yeah. is wrong. Yeah. You know? And like I said, there's, there doesn't need to be a logical reason for it. It just it, it just came. Is. I know what the real reason was for yeah. it. Um, but um, I couldn't point to anything, really. Yeah. And I remember the psychiatrist's prognosis he gave to myself and to my father. He said, this is going to be a lifelong journey. Mm. Um, you know, it's not going to be something that you can overcome. It's like, so basically, it's like having a chronic illness. Mm. It will be with you for the rest of your life and you'll have flare ups. So that's when you have bouts of clinical depression, sure. as they say, you know. And I remember my father, my father is a praying man, yeah. you know. He's a man of God too. And he said in his heart, he said, I, I, I listen to what the doctors say. Yes, he's a medical professional. Uh, but he, he was very forceful. He said, I do not with my child. That's my yeah. own portion. Mm. And I'm very um, grateful for um, people like the likes of my, my parents who mm. were able to stand firm on the word. Mm. Because it looked very bleak. Um, I remember I went to work because I had a very understanding line manager. So I went to work on a flexi time basis, mm. you know. So they made allowances for me to come maybe two, three days a week. And even then it was hard. Hard. Mm. It really, really was hard. I, I, I struggled. Um, I kept on like that for the next two months. So three mm. months was at home, mm. sure. and then the next two months was trying different, um, you know, trying to get back into work, yeah. but on a flexi time basis, and that also was was not successful. Mm. I don't remember that kind of drugs that I took. I remember I only remember one. I think it was called Effexor. Don't ask me the other ones that I took. Mm. Yeah. I took different uh, types of treatment regimens. Um, I did not. They didn't feel like they were making a, a change. What happened instead was that I, it was having negative impact, um, just like side effects. Yeah. Yeah. Know? I'm in no way trying to discount the medical professional yeah. for sure, for sure, or or you know. Uh, drugs to treat, um, you know, depression and anxiety. I'm just giving my story to say, For sure. in my case, I was not seeing any kind of progress. I was not even seeing any bit of improvement in my condition, mm. you know? Sure. It seemed like I was the same level every, you know, like everywhere. Yeah. And I was even, um, there were even talks at one time of me being, um, um, of, of me being uh, 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 admitted into a mental health hospital facility sure. um, because they thought that, okay, maybe if we give her like concentrated or, you know, um, treatment in a medical health facility, she might improve. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, it never got there. I was still on an outpatient basis, mm. seeing a very good psychiatrist, you know, mm. I do not fault them, um, you know, for the doctors who tried to help me. Um, once or, yeah, so I started off being twice a week to once a week mm. and yeah. So. so first of all, thank you for being vulnerable enough to share your story. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the hope as well is just that, um, 
you know, topics would be out of bounds. And, mm. um, you know, it means a lot that you, being a person who has a personal experience, mm. you know, would be able to share your story because mm. maybe there's somebody out there that can relate yeah. to what you're talking about. And maybe they can get help sooner, mm. you know, than, than you were able to. Um, uh, yourself and Mabusi are cousins, yes. Yes, right? Sure. <laughs> um, Mabusi, I want to ask you, what was the experience like from the outside? Um, as the family, I don't know how close you were exactly yeah. to the situation, but um, what what kind of response and or toll did it have on the family? Okay, so mm. I guess you know how a family is. Uh, we never necessarily like, you know, like black families, we don't naturally delve into topics like that. Mm -hmm. It just becomes like an sure. elderly situation, like... You know, maybe the elders will know what's oh, actually going on. Oh yeah, we have to do on. better there. We yeah, have to do and better. then uh, so for us, like as the cousins, because we grew up all really close to each other, mm. it just um, became that thing of like mm. yeah, she Got doesn't it. like people. She Got doesn't it. like being she around wasn't social. people. Yeah, so it was like she's a bit anti. We don't really get her. We don't get her vibe. Mm. You know, but then sometimes it was different in different times. Like mm. sometimes she was super welcoming. Then sometimes she was a bit off. You know, mm. like to her really, really to herself. Mm. Mm. And so we didn't understand. Um, and I think that's the scary part about depression in the black community as well. Sure. Because sure. maybe maybe the person who's going through it, like she says, um, doesn't understand it. And we also don't understand. And we don't know what to do. And then there's also no, like, edu no one offers education for it. Or, sure. You know? Um, and then it's, it's, yeah, it's just like, oh, oh. Or then the next thing becomes, we're going to pray for her and hopefully, mm. you know, something will go right. And so, yeah, that was the, the experience we had of her. And it's kind of making me emotional because she's my cousin. Mm, mm, and it's mm. like the first time that, you know, I hear. Mm. Yeah, it's like the first time hearing that she, it was like that rough, mm. right? Like we heard stories like, yeah, she can't go to work or stuff, but it... Mm. Yeah, for it to have been that unknown for her, mm. uh, like, and for us not to be, I mean, I don't know if we were, could have been there more or what, but mm. yeah, now it feels like a real thing, you know, I mean, I think I've had, I've had bits of anxiety in my life, but never like to that degree. Mm. So, yeah. And that's the thing, what we want to do is we want to, to in, in order for us to have a control over the situation, we just want to label it and dismiss it. Yeah. Right? We just want to say, oh, okay, you know, this is what it is. Let's just, you know, and let's move on with life. And meanwhile, somebody is suffocating, you yeah. know, they're literally like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what to do about it. I need help. I don't know how to ask for help because I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't, you know. Um, but we're just grateful to God that you're here today, yeah. you know, to be so able to... Oh, um, so, so I have two questions, right? Um, and I think when it, when it comes to these things, um, this is... Thank you again, like Loretta mentioned, mm. for allowing us to be in this conversation because mm. the vulnerability here is, is super abounding. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask, you guys are cousins yes. and, and I believe you're, are your father's... Brothers. Brothers, yes. right? Knowing your man, your dad is a praying man, mm. and knowing your dad is a pastor, mm. how was it? And while you were speaking about the heavy thoughts that comes into you, they feel mm. like a ton of brick. Mm. It brought me to a scripture that says, "Take, take captive of every yeah. thought and measure it with scripture." Mm. Knowing that both your fathers know those thoughts, and you mm. describing that to your dad, how did you, as a family, overcome it? And what were the processes as Christians, as believers, yeah. to overcome it to the level where you are here right now. Okay. Yeah, um, yes. So, look, um, salvation does not come by osmosis, <coughs> right? So even though my parents and I was really lucky to be born into a family where a lot of the elders, you know, uh, aunts and uncles were born again. Mm. Um, but then, like I said, I had lived my uh, time in the world and I did not have those coping tools mm -hmm. um, but actually it is quite funny and actually it's quite fortuitous that um, my help came from the family actually because mm -hmm. um, at that time um, I, like you know I was a little bit touched when listening to Lucy because uh, you know I know that um, I think they, they, they kept it from my grandmother because they didn't want her to 
get a heart attack or something like that. Like sure. they didn't tell my grand, my grand. Sure. They told some people. So um, yeah, but you know, so it, it was it was a kind of a secret. Well, not necessarily a secret, but only for my grand. Mm. Um, but but actually, um, it was my family um, that um, that they 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 prayed. Okay, um, they uh, prayed. I had um, an aunt of mine counsel, counsel me and um, I think that was the beginning of the road for recovery. But actually for me to get my healing, and I'm talking about total healing, mm. I needed to go through a process of deliverance. Now I know deliverance is, mm. can be um, a bit um, controversial because some people have abused Mm. But it is the work of the Holy Ghost. Mm. It's work of Holy Spirit. So we shouldn't discount it just because they're bad actors out there. Mm. Mm. And salvation is not complete without deliverance. Mm. I maintain, mm. you know. Mm. And people should not be against deliverance because as a born again believer of Jesus Christ, it is your rebirth right mm. um, to be delivered. Mm. That your salvation will not be assured. You will not be able to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom without without undergoing deliverance because mm -hmm. what happens when you get born again is that your spirit man gets recreated mm -hmm. but you are still in the same body you are still have the same soul sure and where was i afflicted in my soul so, when on. you ask me how you're mm. doing i said i'm prospering because the apostle paul said i wish for you to prosper in good health even as you are so, so, your soul is prosperous mm. the battle between the kingdom of darkness and light is over what is over souls. Soul. So um, a lot of what we are suffering from is diseases of the soul. Mm. All right. And these are demonic attacks. Amen. Mm. I tried. I tried all kinds of pills. Mm. I still have some of them there and I will not throw them away because they are a, a reminder mm. sure. of what God has delivered me from. Mm. So um, one day I went to mm. Lucy's house. She wasn't there. Mm. And my um, like this one. <laughs> yeah, so, I know. I, didn't really I know. <laughs> Yo, can you guys I see like, everything? Because my heart is like, wait, what? I want, I want to get your. I want Sorry, to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please keep keep coming with that fire because no. we've got questions. Go ahead. So, yeah. So I went to my aunt's house, and um, you know, my parents were like, um, "Come, we're taking you," because I think at that time, uh, my they're my pastors now. They started a church, um, and you know, uh, my my pastors. They have the grace for deliverance. So they have the gifts for deliverance. You know? This is Boosie's parents. Yes. So I went there and at first I was like, I don't understand what this woman's doing. Like I love her, she's my auntie, but what's she doing? Yeah. You know, like what <laughs> is her like, what? What? What what's she what does she do, baby? So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I got a little one in it. I'm not supposed to move out. Oh, Jay, you don't know. Yeah. What must come out? Is, yeah. is, is, is she hitting you here? Yes, but that's okay. hard. But yeah, like, you know okay, I mean? but she's saying, yes, come out. Yes, you know, spirit of whatever, ever. Yeah. You know, uh, come out. I'm like, I was actually borderline offended. Is that what you're saying? She's got demons? Yeah. Is that what you're oh, saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got demons? Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And then? And then? Fun story. Um, yeah, so, and then, um, uh, you know, I left. I didn't understand. I won't lie. I didn't take it seriously. I even smiled. Oh, God forgive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even smirked. They know bit. not I what they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I even smirked. And yeah, so it was, um, I think God was doing a new thing within my family. Because mm. multiple members were getting delivered, including my, my, my brother, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you should have him on. His story is also awesome. Yeah. But okay. um, yeah, so... Um, I had left, and what what um, actually confirmed it was that when they prayed for my brother, and I was not there, but proxy, you know. Yeah. Um, and I I was on the way somewhere, and I felt a lightness. I cannot explain. Sure. Mm. I felt lighter. You know, mm. it was almost like I could walk on air. Mm. And I felt so great mm. honestly i have never felt that good mm. and there was a, a night prayer that happened um at my family and i repented i gave my, my life back to christ mm. and i have not looked back since mm. i can't explain it to you mm. because it is it was a supernatural mm. um healing mm. that um that basically jesus delivered me mm. from the spirit of sorrow mm. you know from the spirit of depression I felt so great, like I don't know, I can't explain it to you, like really, really happy and really, really light. Mm. And um, 
what I can say about what the deliverance was meant to do in my, I mean, sorry, the depression in my life. There is, yes, a physical reason for it because maybe I was prone. Mm. Um, but I believe that the root cause analysis was spiritual. Mm. That in my family, um, my paternal side, we have an issue of stagnation and delay. Mm. People in their 30s, they get their first jobs. They do mm. not get married, even after being together with the same person for 18 years. Mm. And I had gone over what um, the standard setting has set. Set, set for my family just by moving out. Mm just by trying to get a master's degree mm -hmm. root cause analysis, right? So, um, yeah, so with the eyes of the flesh, um, it looked like it's just a normal, like this is what happens. Mm -hmm. But now that I have a great understanding of what it was, that it was a demonic attack linked to the generational curses in my family. Mm -hmm. And how I was able to overcome was um, deliverance mm -hmm. and being taught the word. Yeah. So if somebody had to ask me about my depression, I say thank you Jesus for it. Mm. I say thank you Jesus mm. because it was what Jesus could use to draw me back to himself. Mm. If that had not happened, I would have continued with the life that I was living. Mm. So when I think back to it, even though sometimes I cry, mm. um, I'm very happy that it happened. Mm. Because also I could see the power of God at work. Mm. Because ever since then I've never been the same. Mm. And I knew that what I was going through now and um, now I know what I was going through then was to build a testimony to glorify what it was all for his glory. Amen. Mm. Amen. It was all for his glory. Woo. We we definitely have to do a part two of this. Yeah. It it just thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank I you. I feel like this is gonna release thank you, a lot of people. Um it's actually speaking offline. You resonate with a lot of things that Cradle was saying to us offline, things that I was anxious about yes. and actually you're in support of. Um, but, oh man, oh, guys, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. Um, we have to go because we're out of time, yeah. but we definitely will do, will you come back? Oh, he's definitely. We, we will definitely do a part two of this because yeah. we, I just heard Deliverance by Proxy, and that was a whole episode. Come on. I was like, what? Come on. Come on. So, um, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you so much, Dorota, for coming through. You will definitely come through again. Cradle, appreciate you, my homie. Mabusi. Thank you. Come on. Who's coming through with the fire it's my guest? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, remember like, subscribe, share, comment, turn on your notifications. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You know what it is. Peace and blessings. One time. Thank you, guys. Oh, yes.